And thanks for joining us for Action News Live at 5. I'm Vanessa Vasconcelos. And I'm Nick Garcia. We're live on ABC 30, Hulu Live, and wherever you stream. Now to our other top story. New laws will impact how you purchase and carry firearms in the new year. These laws come into effect in the aftermath of mass shootings that have rocked the state and nation. While some say the laws will increase public safety, Action News reporter Gabe Ferris spoke with gun store managers and owners today who disagree. Gabe? Nick and Vanessa, I spoke with the store manager of this gun shop here behind me in Fresno. He told me that the new laws go too far. And he said they aren't even needed in the first place. So this is my everyday carry. This is what I carry pretty much every single day. As a new state law affecting firearms goes into effect in less than a week, some local gun owners say it will soon be more complicated to carry a firearm in California. So right now you have to do an eight-hour course, and on the first, it actually is going to double the course to 16 hours, um, and then renewals are four hours, and it's going to double to an eight-hour course. Dakin Lott is the store manager of PRK Arms in Fresno. He says he's not necessarily opposed to more training, but disagrees with other aspects of the law. Aside from doubling the hours of training needed, SB2 raises the age from 18 to 21 to get a permit for concealed carry weapons, or CCW. The state law would also block people with CCW permits from bringing their firearms to some sensitive locations like playgrounds, churches, bars, and many other places. But a federal judge blocked that part of the law last week. In a statement to Action News, Governor Gavin Newsom said the judge's ruling is, quote, defying common sense, and he called it, quote, repugnant. California will keep fighting to defend our laws and to enshrine a right to safety in the Constitution. The lives of our kids depend on it, Newsom said in part. But at the firing line in Clovis, owner Jake Belemgian told Action News the current system isn't broken. You can ask any sheriff or chief of police uh, about the, the number of issues that they have with people who have permits, and it's, it's none or very, very, very few. Um, we're just not a motley crew. You know, we're, we're, we're not bad people. The firing line in PRK Arms also say another new law nice. will impact their, their bottom line. Oh, gonna... Starting July 1st, an 11% sales tax on ammunition and firearms will kick in. It will impact all ammo, including this box of bullets for rifles that lot showed Action News. The state says money from that new tax would fund school safety and gun violence prevention programs, but Palemgian thinks it will only prevent people from protecting themselves. If you live in a, in a bad neighborhood and you think that you need to defend yourself, maybe now they've just priced you out of the market because you can't afford to pay those fees to get a, to get a permit. Now, I also spoke with a sergeant at the Kings County Sheriff's Office today. He told me no matter how you feel about the new laws, it is important, he said, to handle guns responsibly. The sergeant also encouraged folks at home to reach out to local law enforcement if you have any questions about how the new laws impact you. Reporting live in East Central Fresno, Gabe Ferris, ABC 30 Action News. Well, folks, I want you to listen carefully during this hour. And right now, I'm going to issue a call to all all Americans who believe in and care for the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and understand the importance of the founding of this nation and the importance of saving it. I am calling for all Americans to organize the militia in their cities, in their towns, in their rural areas. I am calling upon you to arm yourselves. I am calling upon you to muster and meet and show those in power, that we're serious, deadly serious. This is a call to arms. I want you to listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen, for freedom hangs in the balance today, not tomorrow, 
today. Your freedom hangs in the balance. Today, right now, as we speak, at least 16 gun ban bills have been introduced in Congress. One has already passed the United States Senate as part of its crime bill, and there will be more. They will flood the House and the Senate with bills to ban the right to keep and bear arms by the American people. Some bills ban long guns. Others ban handguns. Some go after all of our weapons. No matter what kind of gun you own, sooner or later your gun will be on someone's ban list, if it isn't already. The anti-gunners also want to tell you what types of ammunition you can own and what size magazines you can own, and there are measures before the House and the Senate to heavily tax ammunition. They want you to believe that disarming law-abiding citizens will make you and your family safer, and nothing could be farther from the truth. In the cities in this nation, where there is a 100% ban on citizens owning any weapons, they have the highest murder rate, the highest crime rate, the highest statistics of death by crime that's ever existed in this nation. Gun ban bills now in the United States Congress are S-108, bans many imported guns. S-639 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. S-653 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Now, I don't mean many rifles like M-I-N-I. -I, I mean many rifles like M-A-N-Y. S-892 bans all handguns. S-1607 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 893 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 1421 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 1472 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 1501 bans all handguns. H.R. 1568 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 1571 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 1706 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 1734 bans many handguns. H.R. 3132 bans all handguns. H.R. 3184 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. H.R. 3527 bans many rifles, shotguns, and handguns. And there is a bill in the Rules Committee that is coming out on the floor of the House within the next few days that will ban all semi-automatic weapons in the nation. You had better wake up, for when the last gun leaves the last hand of the last honest American, it will be the end of freedom in the entire world. Not just in America, but in the entire world. You can stop this assault upon your creator-endowed rights, protected by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, on your freedom to keep and bear arms. You can tell your congressman that you refuse to be blamed for the violent acts of criminals. You can tell your congressman that you are sick and tired of being told to justify your need to own this or that. Remind your congressman that in America we have a Bill of Rights, not a Bill of Needs, technically. According to a ruling by the executive and justice departments of the United States government, we are under the law of the United Nations Charter and the resolutions passed by the United Nations. This is no longer the land of the free, and I am beginning to wonder if it is the home of the brave. Understand what I am telling you. The Constitution of the United States of America states that the militia, being necessary to a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. The law specifically states that the militia is all men and boys between the ages of 17 and 45. They are required to own a weapon and at least 100 rounds of ammunition. Gun legislation is against the Constitution. It is unconstitutional. The Senate ruled in 1981 that the military is not the militia, that the National Guard is not the militia, that the militia is constituted by the whole of the people. By the whole of the people. By the whole of the people. 
The Arizona State Constitution says that the militia, the unorganized militia, is all men and boys between the ages of 17 and 45. The Arizona State Constitution forbids, forbids, taking the guns away from the people. Specifically states that Arizona state citizens have a right to keep and bear arms with no strings attached. So all gun legislation, specifically gun legislation, which would take weapons out of the hands of those who under the law constitute the militia, is unconstitutional and illegal. You must form militia units now. You must organize now. You must forbid anyone who has ever been convicted of a felony from serving in your militia unit. You must have strict regulation. You must elect officers. You must swear allegiance to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights to protect and defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and you must do this now. You must form publicly with weapons under the law, and you must drill at least one day a month in public with weapons. All weapons must be inspected. They must not be loaded with ammunition, although militia members may have ammunition on their person. You must do this. You must inspect your state constitutions and your state laws. You must organize your militia legally within the law. You must do this now. It will not be long. It will not be long, dear listeners, before they have to make overt moves. to put into place the control of each individual citizen. They have named this as the year that they will disarm the American people completely, 100%. This is the year that they have named for the completion of the total disarmament of the American people. Whether or not they are successful will depend upon you. Right, you're wrong. 
Look, the Second Amendment doesn't say you can't restrict the kinds of weapons people can own. You can't buy a bazooka. You can't have a flamethrower. Actually, that's exactly what the Second Amendment says. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It didn't say only handguns, it said arms. And they said very blatantly, shall not be infringed. So please, Joe, show me where else in the entirety of the Constitution you see the word shall not be infringed. You don't just get to ignore the last four words of the Second Amendment because it's inconvenient to your agenda. You all have been playing loose and fast with the meaning of the words well-regulated militia for decades. But I guess since it's a lot harder to misconstrue the meaning of shall not be in friends, you're just going to act like those words didn't even exist. The guys who make these arguments are the people who say the tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. We need the protection against the government. We need an F-15 for that. You need something well beyond whether or not you're going to have an assault weapon. Um, no, Joe. The guys who make those arguments are the people who want the most effective means to protect themselves and this country. And the Second Amendment was written to guard against people in power like you who say tyrannical shit like... Say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault weapon. The sad thing is, Joe doesn't realize he's literally telling the American people that we should just accept being a slave to a tyrannical government. And then also doing everything in his power to make sure we don't have the weapons necessary to fight against him and the government if they ever decide to become tyrannical. This is a pretty disgustingly scary mentality. 